Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to install a Linux Mint alongside a Windows XP. Okay. So first of all, as you can see, I've got nothing in the CD drive on the disk. This is the size of the disk that I'm using. It's roughly 20 gigabytes. Your hard drive will differ from mine. It'll be a different size than mine. Okay. So the first thing we need to do, we need to download an ISO. So we're going to go to linuxmint.com, go down to the download section, and all versions, and then we're going to look for our long-term support issue of Linux Mint. Now this is uh, supported, it is supported until 2017. And it's called Maya. So we can choose which uh, desktop we want. So we've got Cinnamon, KDE, Mate, and XFCE. Now, the older your machine that you're going to install this on uh, will have lower specs. So a lower spec machine, you'd probably be better off using XFCE. But for this uh, install, I'm going to do it with Mate. But XFCE uses up far less system resources. But if you've got a, a sort of um, middle of the road machine, Mate will do fine. Okay, so for this machine, I'm going to use Mate 32. So that's what I'm going to download. So I've chosen uh, the one I want, and then look for your nearest server. Now for me, it'll be the UK, uh, but uh, anywhere, anywhere that is local to you is fine. Some are faster than others. Okay, so click the download, and then you need to burn it to a CD or uh, a USB. But here I've I've burnt the CD and I've got it in my CD drive. Okay, so don't double click on it because we don't want to load it inside Windows. We want to restart Windows with the CD in the drive. Okay, so Windows is shutting down. Mint starts to boot. As you can see, it's got an automatic countdown timer, which allows you to change your mind if you wanted to. And uh, this will uh, start up um, the operating system, the Mint Linux operating system. Now this, uh, when it's running on a CD, it doesn't make any changes to your system unless you ask it to. And it doesn't make any changes to the CD because you can't write to a CD. Okay, so as you can see, the program, the operating system is starting up. Takes a little time. Okay, there we go. Okay. Wait for the menu to start. Okay, so the desktop is started fully. So we can click on the menu, we can see that our system is here. Our start menu, basically. So the first thing I'm going to look for uh, is Gparted. Okay, so before I start the install, I'm going to go to Gparted. So I go back down to the menu. In the search box, I type G parted. G parted. Okay, and that's the program has popped up. So I'm going to start that. And there you can see our disk, our hard drive. And you can see that it's uh, got a little bit of an unallocated space, but we're not going to worry about that. But this, this section here, that's our main drive. And that's the one partition that we have on our disk. Okay, so on here it's roughly 20 gigabytes. I'm going to click this button here to, to change the size, to resize. 
and I'm going to drag down from the right hand side down to roughly halfway. Again, your hard disk will be different. You need to make the choice of what size you want to allocate to Linux. So we'll have Windows and Linux available on your system. Okay, so once you've done that, click on the apply. Confirm you want to apply. And then that'll cut your, your Windows XP hard disk size in half. Okay, so you can see that we've got 10 gigabytes and roughly te two 10 gigabyte uh, sections of this hard disk. Okay. So the unallocated space is where we're going to install Linux Mint. Okay, so we X that off. Go to, com go to computer again and we can see that although we've partitioned it, all the files are still there. Now, it is generally a good idea to back up anything that you want to keep. Okay, so all your documents and settings you may want to keep. So you'll need to back those up. This is pretty non-destructive. If you do it correctly, you do not, you have no problems whatsoever still accessing. Okay, so I'm going to start up the installer. And because we've been looking at the, the disk, we're going to need to unmount that shortly. So, this is the, st the start. It's asking you what, in what language you want. Mine is English. Click continue. It's asking you, do you have at least 5.7 gigabyte of space? And are you connected to the internet? Now, as I said, it's asking you to unmount the drive that you have mounted. Because we looked at the drive, we need to unmount it. All I'm going to do here is a simple install. If I click on uh, Replace Microsoft Windows with Linux Mint, that wipes the hard drive totally. You lose all the files from Windows XP and it replaces it with Linux Mint. We don't want to do that this time. You've got three choices. You can use something else that's a, that, that comes at a later time if you want to do that. But all we're going to do is going to install alongside. Click install now. Set up your location. We're just going to X that off because we don't need that. Okay, it's just telling you it's doing something. Don't worry about it. So uh, we check our location. For me, it's going to be London. Click continue. And it asks you what keyboard you want. Again, you can change to whatever you like. Okay, for me, it's English UK. Click continue. And it asks for some information. So here you're going to put your name and then uh, you can type in some other further information. Okay, so uh, my name is USB Text. So I'm, and I'm going to change the name of the, uh, the computer. So it can be, the computer's name can be anything you want it to be. So I'm just going to put in XP um, Mint. 13. Okay, so that you can't put any underscores. That's a, that's a wrong type of letter, but you can put a dash in or a minus sign if that's what you want. Now, your name and a username can be different if you want to. Put a password in. Another password to confirm it. Now, you can log in automatically. You can require your password to log in. And you can encrypt your home folder. Here I'm just going to do, uh, I'm not going to encrypt it. I'm just going to have it log in automatically. So nothing is encrypted. No, let's, let's, let's have it to log in. Okay. So I need the password to log in. Click continue. And the install continues. Now I shorten this a little bit. 
Okay, uh, click continue here. And it's asking you, do you want to import anything from your XP system? We don't. Okay. The install continues. And it says that it's ready, that it's finished installing Linux Mint to your hard disk. Okay, now you can continue testing or you can restart now. Okay, so we're going to restart now. Restart the system. And you'll see that it's asking you to press enter. Remove the disk and press enter. And this is what you see when you start up. It gives you the choice of Mint or Microsoft XP. Here I'm going to boot into Mint so you can see that the installed system. And it's asking for your username. So that's your name that you put in. And then it's asking you for your password. Computer starts. OS starts, operating system starts. And there we go. Right, okay. So we need to close that for the moment. And if we just pass our, uh, our um, cursor over the icons, the glitch will disappear. It doesn't happen all the time, it just happens on this occasionally. And that's it, basically. That's how to install Linux uh, alongside XP, and that's called a dual boot. There you go.